Thanks. Uh, time to get to our big headliner now, Vivek Ramaswamy. Uh, Vivek, look, I I've known him now uh, for a little bit, and I got to tell you, uh, as my dad would say, he's a smart cookie. And I think Mike Pence and everybody else found that out on the debate stage the other day. Uh, Donald Trump likes him. Uh, he is channeling a lot of the populist uh, fever in the Republican Party, and he joins us now. Vivek, great to see you here on American Sunrise. Good to see you. How are you, David? I'm doing well. Hey, look, uh, we're here with Gina Loudon, and we're curious about a lot of different things. Let's start with the Hunter Biden indictment. Yeah. What's your take? What's happening? What's really at play here underneath the scenes here? I think this Hunter Biden so-called indictment is really just a deflection. It is a smokescreen to distract attention away from the real issue we should talk about, which is the fact that the Biden family appears to have sold out our foreign policy interests for the private gain of that family, both with respect to Ukraine and quite possibly with respect to China as well. And yet, instead of investigating that, instead of actually going to the root cause of that problem, they are instead creating this smokescreen of a thin charge to effectively placate the public. It's wrong. I also think, David, it's no coincidence that you see the beginning of this, though, right when Biden is losing his own popularity within the Democrat Party. And this is what I think conservatives need to wake up to. It's why I don't even talk about Joe Biden that much when I'm on the campaign trail. Biden is a puppet. It's the managerial class in the administrative state, the deep state, the three letter agencies that have determined when Biden will and won't be useful to advance their permanent interests. And right when Biden's popularity mm -hmm. begins to decline, if they feel like right. Trump's gonna get out of the way, they'll sideline Biden too. That's what's going on here, and I think we have to see through the smoke screen. Yeah. Well, Vivek, um, I have a question that's on the minds of our audience. Um, we sure. try to really express their voices, and one of the things they're very wary of is any Soros influence in politics. So yes. I'd like you to respond to the reports that you've accepted Soros money in the form, I believe it was a scholarship. I've seen, I've read some different things on this, uh, because there's a big difference between a scholarship and a fellowship. And um, I received scholarships in my college years, and I couldn't tell you one source of funding in any of them, by the way. So I wanted to give you a chance to respond to our audience on your sure. reported ties to the Soros family uh, that concerns well, first our of audience. All, yeah. Absolutely. I was just in Iowa. People were bringing in mailers with a picture of George Soros next to me saying that I was somehow compromised by George Soros. That's laughable. I have been the biggest critic of George Soros. And first of all, with respect to George Soros, zero ties whatsoever other than my being a big critic of him in public. Look at what I stand for, it's the exact opposite value set. What people are now extrapolating from is that back in 2010, when I was 24 years old, I applied for a different scholarship funded by a different individual, Paul Soros, who's now long dead, who made his money independently, who also has, as I understand it, at least different views, though I never interrogated them who hundreds of kids apply for. It's a generic scholarship. I want it. Helps you pay for graduate school. I'd advise every 24-year-old in the same position to do the same thing. My view is people should be skeptical. We have been lied to as a people for a long time, including from politicians and people running for office. So I embrace that skepticism. But it's also worth getting to the actual truth of the matter. I think just as they said about Trump, that they've used similar analogies in the past, Hillary Clinton plan, Soros plan. Well, you know what? There are candidates in this race who have accepted George Soros money. I don't particularly hold that against them. Trump had a $160 million loan from George Soros. I don't think that makes him a Soros plant. Ron DeSantis has had fundraisers even this year, this summer, hosted by George Soros' investment partners. But I prefer to take everyone at their word in their cases. I, I take them at their word and we'll actually have a debate on the merits. But in my case, the ties to George Soros are zero. It's fake news, misinformation. Yeah. What do you expect from the media? Vivek, you've been hit, obviously, on Israel, on the whole situation with Israel. Yeah. Uh, why don't you clear this up right here, right now, as it relates to you being, quote, pro-Israel or not? People will say, obviously, yeah. you've talked about potentially cutting off funding, but you say under X, Y, and Z conditions. G give us exactly yes. uh, from your mouth to our viewers about how you see the situation with Israel. Absolutely. So I have full confidence, David, that our relationship with Israel will be stronger by the end of my first term than it has ever been because I will treat it as a friendship, not a transactional relationship. And I say this as somebody who actually has a lot of common cause and ties with Israelis because we have something in common, which is candor. 
some of my earliest and most successful business partners were Israelis. Actually, an Israeli firm backed my first company as one of its first investors. And so I understand dealing with Israel, candor makes a difference. Bibi is very candid. I'm very candid. We're going to have a great relationship. I'll have him over to the White House in a way that Biden did not. I've been very clear. I will lead us forward to Abraham Accords 2.0, getting other countries into that pact. It was a great accomplishment of the Trump administration. We will also make sure that Iran never, ever becomes nuclear equipped. That's a joint Israeli and U.S. interest. I'll stand for it. I'm not using the standard Republican talking points, so that lends itself to misquoting. One of the things I've said is if Israel ever gets to the point where they're no longer reliant on that U.S. aid that we provide them, that would be a win for Israel. But we would not cut off that aid until Israel themselves, Bibi, tells us that they're ready for it. And that's not a ridiculous idea because Bibi himself was the one in the 90s who said that the civilian aid they were ready to wean off as well. So I speak with candor, but that's why we're going to have a real friendship rather than just reading from the talking point binder served up from super PACs to right. GOP candidates. I don't read from that. Yeah. Vivek Ramaswamy, thank you. I'm so sorry we're up against a heartbreak here, but thank you for being with us. It's your Thanks first so time back. here. We hope to have you back again soon. Thank you.